how y'all doing today? Glad to see you here, guys. Hope you're doing great and having fun. There's a buddy of mine that needs a work table built. He does some leather tooling and working and stuff, and he's done a little leather work for me in the past. And I told him I would go ahead and build him a new work table for it. I've got some uh, old cast iron rusted up legs left over off of an old lathe that I had. And I'm going to use those for the legs and throw a little simple oak top on it and a shelf and put on it. And I thought I would do a little bit of quick inlay on it just for the heck of it and uh, show you all a little bit of inlay work. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Uh, I wish every one of y'all could come over here and help me with it. I really do. I don't know why y'all never come over and help. Looks like I got to do all the work. So if, if y'all get some free time, let me know when you're coming over. I could use the help. But for right now, I'll get at it and keep good, keep at it, uh, keep, learn to speak first. <laughs> and I'll be getting it done. Let's get at it, guys. Hey, my friends. These are a couple of cast steel legs that came from a lathe that I bought that I never used. We've sanded them down, washed them up with acetone. Now we're going to put some, uh, what are we using? Oil-based black on the legs. All right, we got them all painted with their first coat of black gloss. So I'm going to get to ripping up some strips of wood here. Hey guys, didn't want to bore y'all with the table saw. We've seen wood go through table saw a million times. But I've got about 50 uh, sticks of red oak here cut up. Two inches thick. Three, three quarter inches thick. Two inches tall. 50 of them. So I'm going to get gluing them up. You can never have too many clamps, guys. Okay, my friends, this is some, some walnut and some yellow heart that I have left over from another project, so I didn't have to cut them, but they're about a quarter inch thick, maybe three sixteenths by an inch and a half wide and I'm going to be using those for my inlay portion today. Hey my friends, y'all doing good? This little chunk of oak here behind me that I glued up is about 25 and a half inches wide and my planer is only 20 inches wide. So here in Houston, not too far from where I'm at, there's a, a wood supplier in town called Houston Hardwoods. If you're here in Houston or in the local area, they are great folks. Got selections of tons and tons of wood, real nice people called Houston Hardwoods. They're on uh, 34th and 290, I believe, right in that area, if memory serves me. But anyway, the reason for mentioning that is my uh, portomatic, or powermatic, portomatic, <laughs> oh God, this guy, he can't talk, I tell you. Oh uh, man, I ought to give up on this video thing. <laughs> Uh, my planer is only 20 inches and this is 25 and a half inches so I couldn't run it through my planer 
and I'm not that great with the block plane. I could have did it, but it would have taken me forever in two days. And Houston Hardwoods has a 36 inch. So whenever I have something big like that, they let me bring it over. And they planed it down for me on both sides. So I didn't have to do that. But I do have a lot of sanding to do now. So I'm going to go ahead and get that done at the moment. While some molding is gluing up and drying. Alrighty. Let's get sanding. <laughs> There you go guys, with my template. Alright guys, let's see how we want to lay this out here. my pencil marks aren't showing up that well for y'all one and a half 
one and a half, two and an eighth, two and an eighth. Right on seven. Right on seven. They're sitting uniform on both sides. Now I'm going to repeat the same process on the other end. Alright guys, this is the little inlay kit that I'm going to be using today. It's made by Whiteside. They make it in a quarter inch model and an eighth inch model. And by that I mean the cutting tip of the bit. On one is an eighth. On the other is a quarter. The quarter is used for larger inlays. The quarter, if you look at them side by side, you see the bushing. And you see the bushing. See if I can get them side by side for you guys. There you go. You can see the bushing on the quarter inch is larger. That's because the bit is larger. And I'll show you guys how that works. Alright guys, this is the bushing assembly. I've taken it apart. The bushing goes on there like so. And you have the lock ring for the bottom. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in the top of the router like so and I like to put a little dab just a tiny dab of CNA glue right there and right there just gives it a little extra oomph to stay right where you want it okay so we're gonna put that in there get this where y'all can see it you have your centering pin your centering pin See right here, I gotta move my back hand, but see if I can do two. For that little lip right there, this is the top. This is the side where the bushing fits firm. That's the side you want facing up. Go ahead and mount it in your router. I have one mounted in here already. And like I say, I like to put a tiny little drop of CNA. So, y'all can't probably see me doing that, but I'm going to put a tiny little drop of CNA on there. This is not the easiest thing in the world to do upside down backwards while you're trying to show it on the camera. And I'm going to bring it up to just barely loose. Now I'm going to bring the router down onto it. Lock it in place. The bushing is poking through. The, uh, the lineup pin, excuse me, is poking through the bushing. And that's where I want to snug down and make the bushing good and tight to the router. All right, with the bushing in there, I'm going to snug up on that ring. And that's not the easiest thing in the world to do. I could take it off and get it tighter, but I'd have to take it off of my centering pin. So, I'm just going to finagle it for a moment. I don't want to take it off my centering pin while I'm tightening it down. We don't want it getting off center. Now I know it's center. Alright guys, I'm going to take my centering pin out. And I'm going to try not to block the camera. Taking my centering pin out. And putting my quarter inch bit in.
There we go, guys. That's better. Sorry about that. That's just one of those hard things to do and show on a camera by yourself. But... We're ready to go. All right, my friends, I have some quarter inch purple heart here, and that's what I'm going to be using for the inlays. So let's get inlaying. All right, my friends, I've clamped my board down so it won't move first off. You want a surface that will not move to route on. All right, guys, a couple of things. I did my test cut with the quarter inch bit I had in there. And it left my uh, template a little smaller than I wanted it to, about a quarter inch uh, narrower than I wanted to. So I went ahead and changed to the eighth. And I'm going to take my bushing off, all right? There's a lot of ways to describe the piece you're cutting and the piece you're putting it into. What I've found that works good for me is the piece that I am cutting to become the insert. I call it the insert. The slot or the dado that I'm cutting out of the board to put the insert in. Probably never heard it called that, but I call it the receiver hole. It works for me, the receiver insert. So, to cut the inlay piece, you do that without having the bushing on. Alright, you take this bushing off. To cut your inlay piece using the template so let me get set up for that and I'll show you how to cut it I'm using two-sided tape this particular one I'm using is not meant for woodworking Let's see if I can get that there for y'all it's sold at your Home Depot's it's made for carpet it's a two-sided carpet tape it works very good for this for me there's some people that say it doesn't. I say it do. All right, my friends, the router I'm using is a port of cable. It is a model, what is this thing, an 890, I think it is. Yes, an 890. I'm not sure of the horsepower horse powder but it's a, it's a plunge router veritable speed very nice router got a lot of good weight to it I like to use a heavy router when doing this I get more control with it when the bits cutting through the wood if you're using a trim router or a little one of those micro routers you don't have much weight so you don't get very good control so that's why I'm using a heavy router at the moment a lot of people will stick their templates down. I do also. I have to when I'm creating the recess because I don't want screw holes in my finished product. But I don't mind screw holes in my scrap wood. So that's why I put some screw holes in my template and screw it down when I'm cutting the inserts. It speeds it up quite a bit. If you've ever peeled and put on and off that sticky tape, you know exactly why. It just takes forever. So, for cutting the inserts, I screw it down. You always want to cut clockwise with the bit. Move the router clockwise. Keep the bearing firm and tight against the edge of the pattern. If it slips off the edge of the pattern, you've ruined your insert. Alright, I've got it screwed down in its second spot. <clears throat> so I'll go ahead and cut the second one. I'm going to make four, probably five of them. Routing the other ones out just like I did the first one. And then we'll peel them up. I'll show you all peeling them up. Alrighty guys, I got all three of them cut on this board, so let's go ahead and pop them out, okay? Ooh. 
There you go, guys. That's why I didn't want to use my quarter inch bit. It would have been too narrow. All right, y'all, now, like I say, for the receiver hole, the insert acceptor, you put the bushing on to cut that out. And you want to make sure your bit is just, just, just below the thickness of your insert. Just below it. I want it to sit a little proud. Give it a little, you know, you can go flush. Then you can have a lot more sanding. A little proud and it's going to be a lot easier to do. Alrighty, my friends, I've got my two-sided tape on my template. And I'm going to drop it on there and keep it nice and in line. There we go. All right, guys, I'm going to get ready to do the cutout. And uh, as you can see, the bit is an eighth inch bit. And that's what I'll go around the edges with it, going around the template clockwise. And then go back and forth and use the bit to cut out all the rest of the fill. I have another router set up with a half inch bit in it. And the same with bushing. So after I make the initial cut, I can come back with a half inch bit set to the same cutting depth. And eat out the bulk of the material in there sooner. But these inserts are too small for that half inch bit so I'm gonna have to eat it all up with the eighth inch bit it takes a little longer and that's the way the kits designed to be used but I've set one up with a half inch bit and the same bushing when the insert is much larger it makes it a lot quicker to eat it up Hey my friends, I got all four in and I want to show y'all something, see if I can help you out a little bit. Okay, can you see that? It's that small, look at my, see that little crack. Go back. Get in there. I mean it is minute. And you say, oh my God, what do I do? Let me show y'all a little trick. This is yellow glue, guys. Just plain old yellow glue. Okay. And I could grab a handful of sawdust and rub it on there. And all that stuff. I got two different color woods. It would never look right. But I'm going across the gap forcing all that glue down into that gap 
I could probably also get this gap to close with some hot water and swell the grain on the wood. All right, that's just yellow glue, all right? The minute sawdust coming off when I sand. God, I wish I could get that camera in there closer for y'all. And there is no gap. Alright guys, if you do a little gap repair like that, come back the next day. Because the glue will shrink a little bit. And you might have to do it a second pass. Depending on how well the glue mixed up with the sawdust. So, just wanted to let you know that it might take more than one pass. Alrighty, my friends, I got to mix up just a tab of total boat here. I've got two little bad spots here, so I'm going to put a little resin fill in them and let them dry overnight. If I can pour a little, that is. guys I've went and sanded my top and my bottom piece up to 320 and I'm gonna go ahead and mount my two uh, oh I don't know I'll call them mounting boards for the legs will be a good name for them I guess <laughs> Okay, my friends, I put a coat of sanding sealer on the bottom surface and I made a bonehead mistake and put my uh, plugs in the center, forgetting that my, uh, my leg brace had to sit in the center. So I had to take those off and in the bottom of my steel brace, I have four slots, elongated slots. So I'm going to go ahead and put a mark in the center of them and you could draw a pencil line and take it off and do this I've been doing it quite a while so I can get it there without any real worries most of the time there we go so... Hey guys, the end of my uh, 
shelf, the bracket that I'm mounting it on on the legs was not designed to have a shelf put on it. So I'm having to custom, let's say, the corners here to make it work on my bracket. All right, my friend, on finishing that table, I'm going to be spraying it with lacquer, and I'm not going to show that because I don't want y'all to see the finished product till I get it done, but I'm going to do it with an HVLP sprayer, but you can do the exact same thing with the can lacquer, and I want to show you what I mean. So I'm going to start with a raw piece of wood here, and I'm going to put one coat on it. I've got my fan set to spray this direction if I turn the little red tip sideways which I got big fingers if I turn it sideways ah it'll spray sideways if I turn it straight it'll spray up and down that's why that little red tips there about six or eight inches away I like about six inches away my, I like to make a double pass, overlapping, no primer, no wood prep other than the fact that it's sanded up to 360, one more little pass. Now we're going to let that dry for about 10-15 minutes, it dries very quick. I'm using DAF. I love it. It's great stuff. All right, guys. The first coat is going to raise the grain on the wood, just like water would. You want to sand it after your first coat with 400 grit sandpaper. Nice and sandy. Always sand with the grain. A lot of common sense there. But going across the grain is not good. That's a no-no. Check. You should be able to feel it. Nice and smooth. Don't use any chemicals or denatured alcohol or any of that stuff. Don't be real concerned about getting all the dust off. Just dust free is okay. Spray on your second coat, same process we did the first time. We're going to let it dry again, 15, 20 minutes. And then we'll get back to it. All right, guys, after your second coat, about 20 minutes later now, Go over it with steel wool this time. Four aught steel wool. Again, stay with the grain. Always stay with the grain. It's the only way to fly. Knock the dust off and put on your third coat. Same process as the first two. Now I'm going to repeat that process two more times. I like to put four or five coats, and I'll give you all a close look at it where you can see it. Here you go, guys. That's four coats put on. And then the very last coat, after I put the last coat, I go over it with the 4 rot steel wool again to take the, the sheen off a little bit. I like that low luster finish. And that's just with simple lacquer. You can put a good finish on in a few hours comes out beautiful every time here you go guys let me give you a look at the finished product those were some rusted up old legs off of a lathe and some oak 
This is a workbench from my friend's shop. He does some leather working. It'll be his cutting table is what I'm told. Got the little shelf underneath that's Wang Gay. No, excuse me, Walnut and Yellow Heart down here on the bottom. And these up top are Purple Heart. inlays Oop, excuse me <laughs> there you go guys gonna get loaded up on the truck here in a little bit a little bit from this side There you go. And I finally got my name plates for the shop in. So, got it mounted on there. He better like it. Hey, my friends. I'm back. I hope y'all liked the little bench I made there. I hope my friend likes it. Mr. Berto's coming over on his way in a little bit. Help me get it loaded up so we can take it over to him. I, I went a little overboard on the inlays. I just planned on putting a little simple Texas star in it when I started. But I thought I'd show you how you could make your own template if you wanted to, to use on that inlay work. And if y'all get a chance, give some of that inlay work a try. That's uh, really simple to do. It's not that hard at all. And it makes for some beautiful projects. It really does. I'm going to be doing another project with a lot more intricate inlay in it than that one here in the future and I'll be showing it to y'all so sure hope y'all liked it if you did and you haven't please subscribe I would be honored sincerely uh, hit the like button if you can if you enjoyed the video if you didn't and you hit the, the don't like button or the thumbs down thing I'll forgive you so you'll be all right no worries there all right guys thank you <laughs> I'm sorry thank you guys thank you hope you enjoyed it Leave a comment. Let me know, please. Looking forward to hearing from you. Thanks now. Bye-bye.